is so satisfying to hear that. <laughs> well, I just like to say uh, I uh, I composed that from the the actual sound of the phone as you dial four one five six six three uh one four one five six six three eight four nine two. That is. What That's that the tone. theme song is, and I have to thank George Merrill, the famous George Merrill of uh, the eighties duo Boy Meets Girl, uh, who helped add some of the effects, including that last <laughs> <laughs> that thing. Thank you, George. Anyway, that here we are. Boy yes. Meets Girl, huh? Yeah, mm. waiting for a star to fall. Hmm. The, uh, this is let's talk. Yes. Uh, this is a uh, this is an a uh, listener call in community forum, getting to the root causes of issues that affect us all, and we welcome all your thoughts and views without judgment. Any thoughts you have, they they should be kind of related to the topic, <laughs> but really we're not that fussy. Uh, <laughs> we just love it when you we call. Just, we just love it when you call. The little light please, flashes. We get so call excited. Us. We're so lonely here in the studio. <laughs> please join today's conversation by calling 415-663-8492 or 8317. And today's topic... Mm. Yes... Toxic beauty. <gasps> what does that mean? What does that mean, Paul? It's not my ex wife. No. It is all about unregulated ingredients in cosmetics, beauty products, all uh, which encompasses a vast range when you start looking at it. It's not just makeup, it's not just foundations, it's shampoo, conditioners, deodorants, uh, douches. Still use everything. douches? Anyone still use that? I don't know. Uh, uh, everything. All kinds of yeah, so all kinds of body lotion, care products. Yeah. Unregulated by the feds. Unlike sunblock. almost every other sun yeah, sunblocks. Mm, sunscreens. Terrible. Mm. Uh and uh, almost every other consumer product is more regulated than the stuff we actually put on our porous skin. Right. People Mainly because it's women doing it. So. Oh, we don't care know. about women. Who That's, cares? Right. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, so change. We've got a lot of women now in Congress. It's yes, exactly. Well, so Diane Feinstein and uh, Susan Collins have introduced a bill in the Senate. Uh, which is to do with toxics in uh, cosmetics. Oh, All nice. right. We're ha- we'll see how it goes. Uh, the California bill that was introduced, I think, last year got nowhere, of course, because, you know, there's a lot of money. It's a 60 billion. How much is it? It's more. I've, I've 100 read. 100 and something any, billion dollar a year. They say 400 billion worldwide, and yeah. it seemed a little high. Yeah, I don't know. It's billions of dollars, so there's a great incentive not to regulate it, of course. And, of course, under this administration, even if it were regulated, next week it wouldn't be. So, yeah. Mm. That's right. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Oh, methane, who cares about that? I I read an article a while back about this very subject, and the thing that was notable was that um, there was a particular cosmetic company and they basically made two versions of their product, mm. one for America mm-hmm. and one for other countries mm. that have regulations. That's regular, like the e entire EU, yes. Right. And, yeah, I, that's... Uh, but why is that? Money, 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 no, money, but, Andrew, but if they're making the same product but with different ingredients, it doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like it's necessary to add all that stuff. It wouldn't change the price. You'd think it would be more expensive if they added all that stuff, but of course it's cheaper when you add. I just don't see the motivation. What's the motivation? You know, what is the motivation behind, uh, well, let me be slightly inflammatory in saying poisoning people. I I don't know. (laughs) Those poor little rabbits, remember them? They probably. They test them all on them. They justify it because of quality, probably, like the texture of something, the smell of something, uh, to make it more appealing. 
That lead in your lipstick is really <laughs> makes it flow much better. It gives it better coverage. Right, right. More density. Yeah. They employ a lot of scientists that, uh, you know, that formulate this stuff. Well, that makes us feel better, like there's somebody looking out for us. But... Not yeah. necessarily. Well, and, uh, you know, I was looking at, there are many sites about safe cosmetics, uh, about uh, so-called toxic-free, nothing, is, nothing, is, and chemical-free. There is obviously no such thing. We're all chemicals. Everything is chemicals. But um, I was reading this morning, I found this uh, site that is written by chemists. And uh, it's interesting because they do they do point out that uh, uh, perhaps some of the less informed of us, the public, the consumers, uh, tend to panic about things when they have more than three syllables in their names, oh, like oxybenzolalukikulokimakinukatukiaka, and uh, or a list of fifty of them. <laughs> yeah, a list of fifty of them, and you know they they do the usual thing, which is what I've just said: is that everything is made of chemicals. Anything is poisonous in the right quantity. You know, water, you can die of water poisoning because if you drink enough of it, you'll die. Uh, and they, and it goes on and on. There's this wonderful, uh, you know, they talk about the language uh, people tend to use. Cocktail of chemicals is a ticking time bomb. Um, nature is a cocktail of chemicals. Modern technology enables us to detect minuscule amounts of substances, but the presence of such a small amount of a specific substance does not mean that it is having any discernible effect on us or on future generations. Oh, dear. It doesn't necessarily mean doesn't that. doesn't necessarily. But, and, of course, we shouldn't really test it, because uh, uh, how are you going to test it anyway? Now it's affecting sea life. Yeah, it's uh, uh, hormone disruptors. A lot of these, the chemicals they use happen to be endocrine disruptors or hormone mimics. And I, I watched and, a YouTube you know, by a woman who, who's, you know, I started using makeup when I was 14 and now I'm infertile and have cancer. Now, cause, uh, correlation is not causation. They point that out many times. That, of course. Uh, you know. But um, wouldn't it behoove someone to be doing research into this? Isn't there anyone doing research into this? Well, there are people. I mean, uh, there are organizations like uh, Environmental Working Group, which is the main one of the main uh, groups that are doing research into all these things, especially sunscreens. Uh, they're they're adding they're getting all the literature scientific literature all the all the papers about different ingredients and you know uh, there are carcinogens and there's asbestos as i said earlier claire's makeup which is sold to preteens and <laughs> teenagers had asbestos in it uh, you know I just, don't, don't we all know that asbestos is bad? Oh, but it's legal again. I forgot. Oh, my. You know, this stuff's even bigger in Korea. Koreans hmm. are are very conscious of makeup. In fact, uh, for the uh, for a, a child's 16th birthday, they will uh, do a facelift in Korea. Facelift. In, it, if you can believe that. It's sort of a like a coming of age. A does not need a facelift. It's sort of a coming of age <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Gift. Well, I think isn't that not sort of true here too? I mean, don't don't we don't we start plastering makeup on our kids' faces at an early age? China, no? like everywhere else, or do else they do it themselves? Uh, becoming a huge. Usually, market. kids don't do it themselves. They, mm. you know, see mom do it, so they want to imitate that. Mm. Yeah, um, um, and uh, as I wrote in the blurb, let's see, uh, let me get the. Let me get my fact right. Um, I can't find it. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you want to call in and get in on this conversation, the number is 415-663-8492. We're the, talking about makeup. The average Cosmetics. American woman uses, I think it said, uh, anyway. Yeah, here we are. The average American woman uses 12 products with 168 different ingredients every day. Now, average. Uh, Average American, whatever that means. Yeah. Who knows? Well, uh, Soap, uh, lotion, shampoo, right. um, shaving cream, right. deodorant, uh, and then then the makeup, maybe hairspray, right? Yeah, everything. Everything that's involved with everything that goes on your skin or on your body or, you know, soap. I mean, 
Uh, who knows what's in your soap? Uh, uh, so um, here is uh, Murray Seward. Thank you, Murray, for writing to me. He said, I, uh, I'm not the average American woman, so I can't speak from experience. <laughs> but I am amazed by the idea that the average American woman uses 12 beauty products a day. The women I know don't fit into the category. Well, uh, yeah, he would be interested in hearing from women about the 12 beauty products they use daily. Yeah, I, I don't know any, any women that do that. And I, I said, yeah, I don't know any women out here who do that, but in urban settings. Yeah, I think it, especially in the, the 20s and 30s age group, mm. uh, you know, marketing is such a big has such a big impact on people and mm. you know sure if, does. if a- anything i encourage people to start paying attention to how they're being marketed to mm. um but i know you know my daughters probably use a, a lot of different you know shampoo conditioner mm-hmm. um the shave cream mm-hmm. lotion uh, sunscreens um hair products now that there's there's sh- um, hairspray, but there's also other kinds of products you can put on your hair mm-hmm. to give it different kinds of textures mm-hmm. and control Colors. and Dyes. change the yeah. color, right? <clears throat> and then, and then makeup. Of course, you need. Um, my my daughter was selling some makeup products for a little while. Um, there's the the foundation, but there's also cover up, which is separate from the foundation. And then there's a cream that you put on mm. your eyelids to make them mm. ready to take the eye makeup, mm. the eyeshadows, and eyeliners, and eyebrow pencils, um, yeah. and lipsticks. And who reads and mascara? I mean, and how can you, for example, read what's in eyeliner on a little? Yeah, Pencil. what is it like? <laughs> well, and I think, four point type. I mean, I think that there's an assumption that we make as an Americans yeah. that we need to stop doing, and the assumption is that if we can buy it in a store, it's safe. It must be safe because who would want to poison us? I right. think the women's movement uh, <laughs> really. Um, I think they they uh, this was part of their agenda was to uh, attack this the notion of the sense of that uh, uh, the. The sense of beauty that is propagated by uh, the cosmetic industry right, and the what fashion woman, industry, yeah, right. all that air, uh, all that. Uh, um, you think really? You think it's changed? I mean, I, no, I, but I think, think that was something that the women's movement. Uh, hmm. uh, that was one of their things on their agenda. Hmm. Was this uh, this uh, this false notion of uh, women uh, holding themselves up to? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, certain standards. Certain of standards, which and who who created those standards? I wonder. I mean, well, they want to sell makeup and hair products, and <laughs> it, it's you know. it's peer pressure from other women, and of yeah. course, men love to see a, a beautiful woman and doesn't really care how her skin is that smooth or how red her lips are, or how she got that way, right? It's yeah. all a mystery yeah. to us. <laughs> <laughs> And we have a caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? And please, keep it clean. Okay. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. I said, oh, hello. It's okay. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, good. Um, 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 I was going to say that I've never been able to make lipstick stay on my face. <laughs> if I had a brain, I would have had permanent eyeliner put on. Mm. It was 30. You just have it tattooed on, and there it is. Because I always like it, and I can't do it now because I'm too shaky for mm. myself, and that's not cool. So I just have to live, I'd be au naturel, which is, I guess, okay. And um, uh, the beauty products that we, I, and that my daughter use, coconut oil is great. It's great for cooking. It's great for your skin. It's a edible massage oil, as is as is um, olive oil. Mm-hmm. It makes wonderful wonderful stuff. And um, I've always long thought that looking at young women or middle aged or any women that obviously have their hair dyed and their fingernails done and their toenails done and their this that and the other thing and all the face stuff and everything, it's got to be toxic. There's yeah. no way it can't be. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, if you, you know, if you look at fingernails, mm. oh, yeah. amazing. Oh my. Fingernail polish. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, people don't realize that, you know, they just they don't polish remover. Don't I mean, think about how right. porous our skin and our nails are and that things actually go into our bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I've never, I think in the, in the, in the women that I've seen around um, Olima and Point Rage um, are more natural looking because they are of an, they're a little bit older, most of them, hmm. and they know on some level, or maybe they just don't care, but um, on some level that the natural aging beauty is really wonderful, which it is, and um, I hope that's why. And I love it when an actress uh, allows it to happen without modifying it. It's just, you know, like Catherine Hepburn. Oh, yeah. This is a wonderful, strong, natural... No facelift, no women, And, and let, your, let your jowls go, and let your this, that, and the other go. Uh, um, jowls, you know, I don't know. But I think, I think you know, especially wild, out, wild, out wild. here where we live... Uh, there's a, l- a lot more people that are aware of the toxicity in in a lot of these products, uh-huh. you know. But um, but boy, if you go to a mall, which yeah, you rarely do. Um, or we had this wonderful girl at the at the dentist office who was a receptionist who had the most astonishing eyebrows <laughs> I've, I've ever seen. You go in there, uh-huh. sitting at the desk, and I go, like, boing! All you want to do is look at these. Obviously, painted on dark brown, almost black eyebrows, these perfect arcs. Yeah. And she looked so peculiar. Yeah. It, it, and she's a very nice girl, and you sort of want to say, uh, but then you don't because you don't want to do it. And um, anyway, she's, she's, she's changed that up. She's looking a little more normal now. Natural. Maybe the cosmetics it, killed Amy Winehouse instead of the <clears throat> alcohol. Oh, gosh. Hmm. Well, never see the way she makes. It's a combination of a lot of things. You know, yeah. it's, what, it's what we're doing to us. And, and a lot of these super whitening toothpaste and, mm. and, and stuff like that can't be... It can't be good for the enamel on your teeth, A. And, um, and a lot of people look like they got a mouthful of chiclets. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, a little too, a little too white. I went to a a, a wedding um, show where they have vendors for the wedding industry, and one of the vendors was selling um, nail polish that was like peel and stick. And so hmm. you would peel it off the sheet, put it on your fingernail, and then you just press along the edge of your fingernail, and it trims it off and it it's like instant fingernail polish you don't have to wait for it to dry mm. so i that's because that's strange it is well here here's but. the thing is i went home with this on my fingernail just one fingernail yeah and then i went to bed that evening and i woke up coughing uh oh mm. and i actually had to get up out of bed and remove it because i could tell it was like fuming ah, the fumes were way stronger than any nail polish but i haven't used nail polish in wow. years uh but it okay. was really bad but why would that be it seems like you could do something with post its right that kind of glue <laughs> you just put that on your nails and then take them off no, at night. it would it would yeah it would come off Okay, here's hmm. my, my try swim since I'm swimming all the time now. Oh. Your, um, shampoo. It yeah. says gently removes chlorine, salt water odor, and green tint. Relieves symptoms of dandruff. Enriched with, get this, organic aloe vera, pro vitamin, vitamin A, watercress, and chamomile. That sounds and natural. Can't put it on your hair. I mean, hmm. Is it like salad dressing? What's a story? This <laughs> <laughs> is lime blossom and mango. Well, that's the thing is like the compost. In- we've been convinced that we have to use these packaged products. I mean, mm. you same the same could be said for our food, right? That mm. that we think we don't have time to cook, and so we need something out of a can or out of a frozen package, um, and we don't think about what's actually in those products and, and what it's doing to our bodies. And mm-hmm. it's like a hidden hidden um, effect. It's a bad joke is what it is. You know, you pointed out something, though, is that uh, when the industry senses that there's a market for a product, and in this case it's a market for a product that has natural ingredients, yeah. they will respond. They want to be in every market. 
and and they if they see that hey we got to be in there mm-hmm. so yeah, it, what service Stephen? it shows the power though of of we the consumer the buyer sure. uh, if they if if the propaganda the advertising that that they spew endlessly uh if we could get that into people's head that uh, they need natural environment, then they'll respond. Well, somebody wrote an article that said if you put really natural stuff in shampoo, it would go bad. Mm. Well, that's... On, on the shelf, that, that, yeah. it would, that it would start to get, go little... away if you put really good juice in the fridge. Mm-hmm. and leave it for two months, it's going to get some little crawly things on it. It'll be bad. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's a lot of what these uh, these created chemicals... I, you know, I, I sort of hear the chemists, uh, these chemist guys saying, well, yeah, so what? Synthetic isn't necessarily bad. Okay, so, but these are synthetic chemicals, mostly quaternium-15, which I believe is a, a nice a radioactive isotope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, which is used as a preservative in a wide range of products, including shampoo, shaving cream, skin creams, and cleansers. Yeah. Wow. And uh, the parabens, propyl paraben, and the other one—they're the—they're preservatives. That's why they're in there. And everything liquid that goes on people's bodies—you try and find anything that doesn't have parabens in it. Oof. I gotta check it's my pretty scary. And kiss my face. Yeah, it's first. it's scary because they, you know, they just keep adding all these things because it makes it feel silky or it gives it a you know, color just get or, in the know. shower with a wash rag, <laughs> scrub it down, scrub it down. <laughs> What's in your water? Oh. Well, I think we're so used to watching Uh-oh. our hair for five minutes, too, that you need to get a whole bunch of glop to put on it to smooth it down. Because when you get it, like, over 60, it, it, your hair tends to fly away. Mm. Our economy hair. is dependent on this. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have that advertising, women's magazines do not exist. This is heavily Absolutely advertised. True. They take a page after page. Your... Uh, the magazine industry needs it. The, the publications... Television, everybody. If if they stop advertising this stuff, hmm. the whole well, thing the collapses. Four hundred billion dollars, one hundred and sixty billion dollars. Whatever it is, it's yeah. all in that this market. That is just telling people what they don't know they need yet. Yeah, you know, and what they can't live without. Right. Because because Joe Blow and Jane Blow are are ha- have it, and they're your neighbors, and you want to be up with them. It's not ahead of them. So right. da, 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 I don't operate that way. But and you uh, want to look like the seem to. You want to look like the Kardashians or something, right? Ew. There you go. Yeah, Scary. I mean, it's, and who knows what's yeah. in all those plumping? Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> the plumping exactly. I didn't know how to say it. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> All that plumping stuff. Well, you know, I I can I'll, I'll insert I'll insert a little hope here. Uh, I I was backstage at the Shakespeare production and we were doing our dress rehearsal and I offered to one of the little girls, "Would you like a little blush on your cheeks?" And she looked at me and said, "My mommy says that those things are bad for you." Oh, mm. bless her. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So, so, you know, change can happen, but it, it takes happens. time. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's very good. I'm, I'm way too cheap to buy my kids stuff like that, so they have to get it on their own. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's, it's fun to... I thought first that the subject was savage beauty, and I thought, wow, what's that about? Oh. But, oh. It's, it's ta- that could be next week. That's next um, week's show. Savage <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> Starring <laughs> Shelley Ruff. Oh, God. Well, how many <laughs> no times way. have you seen somebody who is naturally uh, good-looking, beautiful, and then they... Every time they, I look in the mirror. And then they use makeup. <laughs> They're going to a party or something, and then they use makeup, and you go, oh, my God, what happened to this woman? Hmm. Because well, they're not used to it. Done at Nordstrom's once, and I was totally unrecognizable. <laughs> ah. I didn't know what the heck. You know, everything was smoothed out. You're so incredibly smooth. You could slide under a door. I mean, it was crazy. Wow. I didn't like it. I don't like that fake face. I met a woman years ago uh, when I worked in an art supply store. She... Um, had me doing a little project for her and in the course of do, working with her learned that um she said her her husband has never seen her without makeup and i'm thinking how is this possible how'd she have a baby did she ever have any children you Didn't know swimming so so she would have to i don't know like get up before he does to put on her ex- 
expansive Be- regime of makeup. Wow. Uh, I, you know, the whole you lifestyle. Like a raccoon, otherwise, if you go to bed with it, on, right? You know, like wake up in the morning, got these big raccoon eyes. I going did on. see there was a series or a film or something that I saw recently where the the female character did that very thing. She would wait until he was asleep, go to the bathroom, wash everything off, set the alarm for half an hour before he gets up, goes to the bathroom in the morning. Room. Yeah, well, there, there are is. other chemicals to take this stuff off. Well, yeah. Uh, as you said, nail polish remover, acetone. Yeah. <laughs> Wash good. your hands with acetone. Uh. With your fingertips so you can turn a page. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Anyway. anyway. Well, well, thank you, MK. You're beautiful, and I love you all. Uh, <laughs> I'm you. back at you. You too. Have a beautiful Bye. day. Bye now. Bye. The number to call is 415-663-8492 if you have any comments or experiences with um, cosmetics and the effects of cosmetics. uh, Walking past nail bars. Oh, oh. well, see, I'm I'm really salon where they do fingernails and toenails. uh, Very often Vietnamese Vietnamese women for some reason. Who are sitting in this place all day, breathing right. acetone all day. Wow. Yeah. Um, the Personal Care Products Safety Act, Diane Feinstein and Susan Collins, uh, bipartisan thing, which is getting support in Senate, apparently. It'll never go through. Uh, companies supporting it. Uh, all kinds of small, smaller uh, skincare companies, but also... Estee Lauder, which makes all these, you know, Estee Lauder, Clinique, Tommy Hilfiger, La Mer, Bobby Brown, Donna Caran, Avida. Uh, then there's more organics, and then there's Johnson & Johnson. And then there's L'Oreal, which makes, oof, God. Some I was going to bring up the, Avida, though. Procter & Gamble, Revlon, and Unilever are all supporting this. Amazing. Uh, you know, well, they're, they're yeah. Just it to look good until it doesn't pass. Do we trust them? <laughs> it must be toothless if they're supporting yeah. it. Do we trust our chemical companies? Why okay. not? They're only human. Well, they wouldn't be poisoning us, would they? Well, Veda no. uh, it might be a uh, different sort. I, I should have looked it up, but they advertise uh, a well, natural <clears throat> products. I think <laughs> I think the, the, the big boys really do both. They make stuff that they advertise as being less toxic and then they just carry on making the stuff that everybody knows which is probably cheaper they probably you know they'll charge more for something that they say is non-toxic for some reason because it's a niche market ah yes well anyway it's really sad that we live in a world where humanity and the environment none of it counts for anything yeah you know, I keep thinking that, uh, uh, like most of uh, these corporations, they're passing on costs of doing business to the public. Mm-hmm. In this case, uh, health care, the fact that this uh, affects people's health, they're, just, it's, they're not accounting for that. Mm. Uh, so the billions and billions of dollars that are spent on health care that could be prevented by the food industry, mm-hmm. in this case, uh, cosmetics, the yeah. air, we're treated, they treat the air as if it's a waste disposal. And the water. The water. Rivers, that's what they're for. That's yeah. what they used it's to be all for. all public property. They Build your factory next to the river, dump it in the river. Not paying for this. No. This is KWMR, full of good news today. <laughs> <laughs> KWMR, 90.5 in Point Race Station, 89.9 in Bolinas, 92.3 in San Geronimo Valley, and, of course, online at KWMR. O-R-G. Support for KWMR programming is provided by the California Film Institute celebrating film and media as art, entertainment, and education at the Christopher B. Smith Raphael Film Center, the Mill Valley Film Festival, and through CFI education programs. In, uh, information at cafilm.org. And KWMR is also supported by the Marin Foster Care Association, supporting foster children in Marin through education nights, mom-to-mom trainings, a community resource center, and more. The association's annual Blues and Brews event 
On Saturday, October 12th, will provide funds for their programs. Information and tickets at 415-507-0557. 415-507-0557 or marinfostercare.org. And we're also supported by Point Reyes Vacation Rentals, a local family-run and community-minded vacation rental business with over 25 years of experience in lodging and hospitality management. Point Reyes Vacation Rentals rents and manages homes throughout West Marin. More information at 415-663-6113 or online at pointreyesvacationrentals.com. And this is Let's Talk community radio for listeners to call in it's a forum for all of you listeners out there give us a call if you have any thoughts opinions what are we talking Uh, about again we are talking about what i called toxic beauty but uh it's about the unregulated ingredients in uh products that we put on our body uh, every day soaps shampoos, all that stuff. Um, Natural and man-made chemicals is more from the chemists. Uh, They point out that uh, apples have amygdalin, which is, you know, terrible. Uh, Muscimol is in mushrooms. Uh, Potatoes have solanine. Uh, if you're uh, sucre, uh, yeah, you know, they, they they list all these things that are natural. The most poisonous thing in the world, most poisonous product uh, uh, compound of all, is not ricin. Oh, botulin, the uh, the botulism, uh, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> that botulism stuff. That botulism stuff. Putting that in cosmetics. Uh, that's these, what they they put. They point out that yeah, they, well, they, they do. use it Botox. for Botox. Ah. Uh, a teaspoon of that would uh, would kill a quarter of the world's population. <laughs> oh my, that's a uh, thought. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> but let's let's inject it into your skin right about now. You ready, Stephen? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, Botox. I'm ready for anything. There's another thing. Um, I, 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 I don't know what to say about it, but as someone who co-wrote a book called Brain Lines, which is all about the lines between your eyebrows and how they, uh, how they demonstrate your uh, brain balance, um, I'm kind of against Botox. But, hey, you know, injecting poison into your face, why not, if it makes you feel good? Hey. In fact, using any makeup product, any shampoo that is full of uh proven carcinogens and uh and and things that kill coral reefs, you know. Why not? Why not? As long as you look good. Hi, right, Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? Sally. Sally. Hello, Sally. Hi. Hello. 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 So in praise of Botox. <laughs> um uh, it, it has been used medicinally prior to its cosmetic application for things like lazy eye and mm. um, to retrain the muscles for the eye to stop uh, wandering, things like this. Oh, that's good. You know, I mean, there, there, there have been medical applications. It wasn't just invented just or, you know, ap- applied for this beauty reason, but it is a big I mean, everybody is doing it, and all these young people are doing it. Women are doing it preemptively in their, probably in their 20s, but for sure in their 30s. A lot of women do it. Um, and I'm not in praise of that. Hmm. I'm, only in, I'm only just saying that it wasn't invented as a cosmet, solely as a cosmetic thing. No, no. God made it. I think that's uh, typical of a lot of things, God, isn't it? The God made it to kill us. Secondary. Huh, say it again, Stephen. I think isn't that typical of a lot of things? These secondary discoveries. Yeah, probably, uh, absolutely. Like yeah. fluoride in toothpaste. Certainly which drugs. Was, implants, uh, breath. Certainly a lot mm-hmm. of drugs. And, 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 and the, the the silicone implants were probably mm. created for women who had mastectomies. Sure. Mm. Talk about side effects. We won't get into that. Mm. Um, also, implants. There is a website. Or rather, there are websites that give you lists of 
uh, clean, in quotes, cosmetics. Yes, there are many. Uh, yes, there are several websites, and lots of companies starting up, and uh, even the big boys are making clean, so-called clean cosmetics now. Yeah, true enough. There's a good one that's local called Juice Beauty. Juice mm. Beauty. Juice hmm. Beauty. It's made in San Rafael. Oh, there woman you owned company. Why is there? Why are we getting feedback from you, my honey? I don't know. <laughs> There's uh, also locally Black Mountain Beauty. Ah. Is uh, she started making beauty products for a while now, and nice. They can be found yeah. locally here in Point Reyes. Excellent. There are makers, so there's sort of a maker movement, and people are making their own cosmetics. Um, I hear all kinds of weird noise. Just saying. Yes. Oh, maybe it's because we have two lines open. That's ah, that's you have someone is. else on. The phone. We oh, do. So oh, oh. I will let you anon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sally. Nice Thank talking to you. Hi, other caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? <laughs> I hope you liked all those disturbing noises. Out that was. How do you oh do that? Oh my goodness! It was absolutely deliberate. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Uh, you know, the, the, King of the Marshall. The thing seems to me the the biggest one is that you know we're more and more on display, we have professional lives out of the house, and you know we come up with rituals that that make us feel confident when we leave the house and are going to be seen by strangers or by people that aren't necessarily our friends, um, and. And so that, that it kind of strikes me as, as a real problem. People feel uh, compelled to, to, to um, you know, come up with this way of displaying themselves, and they mm-hmm. become addicted to, to those activities. I mean, for men, there's a whole kind of fitness culture, and, and they take lots of toxic things apparently to make them more muscular or, you know, yeah. vigorous or something like that. Yeah. There is some kind of male version of it, but, you know, get confident, stupid. Well, um, it's in, but it's in everything we use, though. It's not just about cosmetics. It's like shampoo. if you wash your hair, men and women wash their hair, and... Uh, you know, uh, soaps and all these other things that everybody uses. It's not just a women thing, but yeah. Well, I, you know, that's right. And I, I, you know, when I lived in cities and you work in cities, you know, you're surrounded by mirrored glass all the time. You're seeing yourself all the uh-huh. time. <laughs> and people become very, very self-conscious about their uh, appearance. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's... Uh, and then there's a generational thing. If you're my mother's generation, for instance, they, um, you know, don't want to leave the house without lipstick. They find that to be just too strange to count them. That's true. Uh, and that, you know, I think is fading somewhat. But that issue about confidence and how you display yourself in a kind of public setting is, if anything, intensified. You know, people are really really crazy about it so yeah yeah yeah. well it's uh, a lot of pressure if you buy any magazine yeah yeah there, it's, it's, there it is we had more domestic lives and we you know our work was closer to our homes there weren't these pressures upon display hmm. but those things could be more ritualized but now people are putting on the war paint every day yeah yeah well I mean, it's an urban population now it'd be so, interesting to look yeah. back and see what women used uh, before well, all this existed, I, I'm sure there were there was a lot of there were, interest. There were terrible things then too. Of course, there was st- there was lead in uh, ah. in makeup that uh, Romans used. You know, they <laughs> used lead for all kinds of things. Uh, uh, other pigments are terrible. Mercury. There was mercury in uh, cosmetic products. That hopefully is not so much the case anymore, but who's to say? I don't know that the FDA has actually... I think they banned nine chemicals from back in 1938 or so. But, and since then, they've been... People of uh, our elected representatives have been trying to introduce bills to come up with something that's more recent and keeping up with the, the list of chemicals that are now available, and nothing has happened. I can't imagine why. Well, yeah, I mean, sure, that's, that's the, the, the interest of those corporations. I mean, I think for us is, is thinking about how we can be more confident about ourselves and not, um, and not I mean, like me, I've clearly long ago abandoned any interest in my appearance. Um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, what are you talking about? You're known as a fop around Marshall. Uh, gee, how dare you? No, you do have this. You're naturally handsome, <laughs> oh, yeah. though. Uh, it's true. I am the Scarlet Pimpernel. The, um, uh, no, I, I, you know, it, but it falls away. But you sort of have to want that to happen. 
like, you know, showering every day. I would not have felt normal when I lived and worked in cities if I didn't shower every morning. Mm -hmm. I would feel deeply strange. Don't have that problem in Marshall so much. (laughs) (laughs) In fact, I'm walking around nude here on the bay. Oh, good Lord. Anybody wants to come by. Hide your eyes. Hide your eyes. No, you're not doing scientific research. Um, So those were sirens we heard. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So, no, I mean, but that's really, really tough. You know, I remember being anxious if there was leaving the house as a boy if there was a stain on my clothing. Yeah. It would make me feel terribly anxious. Sure. That, that, you know, people in these really impersonal settings, in these really public settings where you're forced in with groups of awful strangers, meaning schools and children, um, the, the most awful well, strangers of them all. But for uh, for school children, the children of school age, uh, like especially teenagers, everything is personal, isn't it? <laughs> I think that the, the setting itself heightens people's anxiety. Yeah. And, and rather than uh, saying, you know, do these institutions make any sense? or create happy, healthy people, we're continually adjusting ourselves to, mm. to the demands of those institutions sure. as though we were the ones that needed to change, not them. But I, I find it very weird. I like to, uh, coming to a place where West Marin where women don't uh, wear much makeup, if any at all, mm-hmm. uh, and it just seems much more normal to me. But I, that's not the world I grew up in. I grew up in a world in which, you know, uh, uh, fussing over public appearance, certainly uh, more pressure on that for women, I think, uh, in a lot mm-hmm. of ways than for men, was the norm. Um, I just, you know, today I would find that very strange. I find yeah. it um, uh, odd when people wear lots of makeup. And, of course, the culture is really strange. I mean, this is a, a, a quote from uh, one of the uh, Kardashian women whose, um, whose parents took them to, like, when they were, like, 12, 13, to professional makeup artists to learn how to put on all that makeup. Sure. <laughs> Their comment was, is that basically we were taught how to be drag queens <laughs> in our early teens. This is a, it's a, true. I mean, the only people who wear makeup like that are the Kardashians and drag queens. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've, uh, so we should put it on that problem, but the plastic surgery thing, too. I, there's this television show that's become popular uh, amongst uh, a certain uh, a segment of my neighbors uh, starring Lily Tomlin who I remember as a kid, and I really liked because she was always a sort of sassy, intelligent, funny character, uh, and I, I, I thought she was pretty great. And I looked at the program. She has carved herself up beyond recognition. Oh, yeah. Not Lily. Sad because she always played the sort of intelligent, you know, uh, 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 characters. But, you know, the pressure to, to, to do something, and obviously what she did didn't work. Uh, overwhelmed her, and, mm. and I think that's quite sad, too. Keeping up with Jane, I guess. Yeah, really pathetic. And, of course, they're held up as role models for women. Mm. You know, they're supposed to be, oh, look how empowered they are. Really? Mm. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's quite sad, too. Right. There's the mm. whole sorting it out thing, you know, that we as consumers have to be able to, to pay attention to the details and sort things out. I, yeah, and I think it, it's a kind of a, a renunciation that people have to, to get involved in. I'm not going to allow myself to, 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 to submit to these pressures. And I think what you'll find is when you go out and you interact with people, um, you'll live. Uh, yes. And you won't have to, you know, have your life be dictated by the, the fear that you have to present yourself in a certain way. Um, again, uh, something I do blithely. Um, but, uh, you know, and that's hard. And I don't know. I mean, maybe women are getting better at this. Uh, I I have no clue. So I should probably get off the air. But thank you all so much. Well, thank you, Charles. I think we've reached Appreciate a new it. point that when Charles Bye-bye. quotes the... Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a uh, uh, the number is four one five six six three eight four nine two. We have about oh ten minutes left here. Um, here's a here's chemicals of concern. This will this will this will be an upper. <laughs> <laughs> oh goody! Uh, something that is not listed on ingredient labels. One four dash dioxane, a contaminant linked to cancer, found in products that create suds such as mm. shampoo and liquid soap. Acrylates, of course, in artificial nail products. Benzophenone, linked to cancer. It's in lip balm, nail polish, Mm. and used to protect the products from UV. Butylated compounds, organ system toxicity and endocrine disruption led the European Union to prohibit the preservative BHA from cosmetics. Not so in the U.S. Carbon black. Now, there's something that was used, has been used forever. Just soot, Right. That's, I mean, that's to uh, make eyeliner, eyeshadow yes, and eye, uh, right? a lot of it. Carbon black. Dark black powder used as a pigment in cosmetics uh, has been linked to increased incidence of cancer. Now, 
the chemist would say, well, just because they're wearing mascara doesn't mean that caused the cancer. Okay. Uh, Such a small amount. It, well, it is, but you think every day? Mm. Every day? Uh, carcinogens in cosmetics. The laws governing cosmetics and personal care products are so limited that known cancer-causing chemicals are legally allowed in personal care products in the U.S. Coal tar. I remember coal tar shampoo and soap. Lovely. I love the smell of it. But then I love the smell of coal. So, yeah. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's, we'll it, it's found in shampoos, soaps, hair dyes, and lotions. Uh, ethanolamine compounds, a uh, type of uh, DEA, is widely used in cosmetics. The European Union prohibits DEA in cosmetics due to <laughs> concerns about formation of carcinogenic nitrosamines. Ethoxylated ingredients, reacting ethylene oxide with other chemicals to make them less harsh, uh, causes problems, especially in children because they absorb it faster. Well, the children absorb all these things faster. Formaldehyde, yes, uh, found in shampoos and liquid baby soaps. Oh. Known carcinogen. Uh, fragrance. Many products list fragrance on the label, but very few name the specific ingredients that make up a fragrance. And, you know, they're all a lot of volatile compounds in there, apart from anything else. So you're talking uh, volatile organic compounds, which are bad for you as you inhale them. And uh, <laughs> there are neurotoxins in some of these fragrances, especially in, like, uh, uh, dryer sheets and mm -hmm. softeners and all that sort of nonsense. Yeah, I can't walk past one of those Ugh. candle stores oh, and no. sell candles. Yeah. I, I have to, like, really swing <laughs> out wide. <laughs> I know. Yeah, the smell. Homosalate, homosalate, I don't know, homosalate is a widely used chemical in sunscreens and skincare products with SPF. Uh, it's a potential endocrine disruptor and hormone mimic. Hydroquinone, one of the most toxic ingredients used in personal care products. Hydroquinone is primarily associated with use in skin lighteners marketed to women of color. Oh, God. Lead and other heavy metals like arsenic, mercury are contaminants found in a wide variety of personal care products, including lipstick, whitening toothpaste, eyeliner, and nail color. There's two... Two chemicals I can't even pronounce. They may be hard, hard to pronounce, but they're even harder on the body. Methylus isothiazolinone. Mica has a natural ingredient, uh, natural ingredient but uh, it's been linked to cancer and uh, nail polish removers, of course, and certainly terrible for uh, the workers, uh, re linked to reproductive harm and organ toxicity. Oh, nanomaterials. We haven't even talked about them. You know, <laughs> oh, interesting. I wonder if they've done a study on Vietnamese women who work in the uh, doing all those many all the yeah, time. Yeah, I know. But I just wonder if they've studied that. That's they keep the doors open, the back door and the front door open. Just yeah, you know, yeah, great. Uh, nanoparticles in everything, especially in sunscreens, uh, used as UV filters and preservatives. Uh, nanoparticles get absorbed into your body through the skin, and some of them are small enough to go through the blood-brain barrier. And of course. Yes, and then there are other ingredients in, in sunscreens that are uh, killing coral reefs. So CVS has said they will not, in their own products, they're not going to put in uh, a certain ingredient, which I've forgotten what it is, but it's going to be banned in Hawaii and in Key West especially because it, they've found that it's killing coral reefs. Oh, they think so. Chemists would probably disagree. Uh, nitrosamines are impurities linked to cancer that can show up in a wide array of cosmetic ingredients. DEA and TEA. Octinoxate. Oh, that's it. Octinoxate was one of the one of the ones in sunscreen that's killing the reefs. Uh, it's an endocrine dis disruptor. Uh, parabens. As I said, try and find beauty products that don't have parabens in them. Uh, Endocrine disrupting chemicals absorbed through skin, blood, and digestive system. PABA, P-A-B-A. -A. Remember when everyone had PABA sunscreen? I certainly did. Uh, not good. Even petroleum jelly, let's face it. Uh, phenoxyethanol, a preservative in cosmetic and used as a stabilizer. It's a carcinogen found in polyacrylamide. Uh, breaks down into the carcinogen acrylamide. 
PTFE, that's Teflon, Teflon in your makeup, yes, Cons- and uh, others, preservatives, phthalates, those are the banned from cosmetics in the European Union, phthalates are widely used in color, cosmetics, fragrance, lotions, body washes, and other products sold in the United States. Quaternium-15, as we said earlier, styrene, acrylates, oh, God. resorcinol, retinol, synthetic musks, talc, titanium dioxide, toluene, triclosan. Wow. All of these are allowed in uh, U.S. products, and many of them are not allowed in other countries because, you know, they're just alarmist. Oh. <laughs> We all need to be more alarmist. <laughs> uh, we're you in know, a heap of trouble. We know that. Greta well, Thunberg just landed in New York. Yes. She's telling us we got to sound the alarms. We need to get into action. There you go. Uh, <sighs> so, um, uh, yeah, this is, uh, these are ingredients. So I'm, I would say, I, you know, this is just my opinion, not the opinion of KWMR or its underwriters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would uh, be careful about what you put on your skin and yeah. read the labels and certainly go to Environmental Working Group. Uh, there's also a campaign for safe cosmetics. Um, there, are me- there are several websites that are devoted to uh, and organizations that are devoted to studying what's uh, the ingredients in all kinds of consumer products. And Environmental Working Group does uh, sunscreen evaluations every year almost. Uh, FDA says if your sunscreen says it's more than SPF 50, it's probably not true. Hmm. Really? Hmm. Um, and, oh, we have just enough time for one more caller. Hi, caller, you're on the air. Hi, it's MK again. Ah. Um, Sally was absolutely right. That, um, I know that, that Botox is being used by a lot of Parkinson's people for pain. And it seems to be very, very effective. So mm. I don't know if there's long-term studies, probably not. And the other thing I was wondering about, what about stage makeup, like grease paint and stuff like that? Because a lot of it wouldn't be theater without makeup. Yeah, exactly. And, and what, you know, what, what's the, I wonder if there are any um, statistics on I'm what pretty, happens with. You know, back in the 60s, there was a big uh, craze to do this body painting, and they mm-hmm. and the artists would completely cover someone's TV body. Show about it. And um, I think there were some people that actually died because their their pores were so clo- well, like you know gold girl and gold right it, it suffocated because she was all gold exactly yeah and um, so you know we're learning all the time about our bodies mm. and how they function mm. and um, we always think that someone like a doctor or a chemist knows better than us mm. um, the FDA <laughs> we're the think, experts yeah and we trust and um, we need to you know pay attention and I know like uh, I, I have reactions to fragrances mm. um, and it can range from uh, a tingling sensation on my upper lip. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could div- I could start coughing, mm-hmm. um, or I might get a headache, or my eyes will hurt. Mm-hmm. So it it depends on what it is. But you know, I've started noticing those reactions myself, and I think that that's something that we all need to do is is pay attention to how we feel after being exposed to different products. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, thank you, MK. Thank you again. Take care. Yep. Bye. Bye. And, uh, yeah, again, just read labels. And, of course, the ones that promote themselves as being safe, uh, don't just trust that. Just read the labels as well. Do some research. If you're going to be using this stuff every day as, like, shampoo and soaps, and you need to know... Of course, what you're putting on your body, because your skin is a vast sponge that just soaks everything up and lets everything into your bloodstream. And uh, from there, it goes to your organs, and yes, all kinds of terrible things happen. Um, And so let's voice support for uh, the bill that's going, making its way slowly, perhaps, through the Senate. Uh, see if it actually gets anywhere. The one in California did not get anywhere, apparently. That's that's kind of surprising. This b- California bipartisan support. Uh, this one in the Senate, yeah, in the U.S. Senate, does have bipartisan support, and lots of support from all kinds of 
wonderful organizations and uh, companies. And we'll see how that goes. They'll just uh, take the information and create another line, I guess. Apparently not from the president, though. Well, I don't know. Maybe he'll, you know, he uses a lot of stuff on his skin, obviously, on his hair. On his hair. (laughs) He's using a lot of products. (laughs) He should be concerned, as should we all. Well, this has been Let's Talk. And thank you to everybody for listening. Thank you to our callers. Uh, this, uh, Let's see, am I back next week? Yes, one more week, and then I'm leaving for a while. So, uh, Oh, no. Yes, you'll just have to do without me. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for calling. Good afternoon. And, uh, and good afternoon. Have a wonderful day.